this session is all about the new and cool features which come part of Microsoft 365 and Azure Active Directory. And I guarantee you're gonna learn something here. So stay tuned. Greetings fellow YouTubers, Andy Malone, Microsoft MVP, as well as a Microsoft Certified Trainer. First of all, 2,000 subscribers in one month. I gotta take my hat off to you guys. You guys are a bunch of stars. Thank you so much for all your support uh, with my channel. I really, really do appreciate it. And if this is your first visit, then I gotta tell you, you're really welcome and it's great to have you on board. If you've not subscribed, go ahead, hit that uh, subscribe button up there, ring that bell, and I guarantee that you'll not miss out on any tutorials that I've got for you because that's what this session is all about. It's all about learning. So the first piece of big news this week is Microsoft Entra, the rebrand of Microsoft's identity platform. Now the platform now includes three core products. The first of which of course is Azure Active Directory. This is Microsoft's identity and authentication platform. Microsoft, uh, you may know, recently purchased a company called Cloudnox, and Cloudnox does some fantastic permissions management. And in actual fact, if you have a current tenant for Azure Active Directory, you can actually go in and try Cloudnox uh, for free. But this is uh, gonna be a standard part of Microsoft 365 and Azure Active Directory permissions management. It was called Verifiable Claims. It's been in beta for quite some time. It's now been rebranded as Verifiable IDs. And this is gonna be a major step forward in identity and authentication. Um, and I'm gonna be doing a session on this in the not too distant future, so definitely watch out for that. Okay, so for my number two, I want to take a look at Microsoft Priva. Priva is Microsoft's privacy risk management technology. Very cool. Let's have a quick look. So for this demo, I'm kicking off in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. I'm scrolling down and I'm coming into Compliance. Now, first up, you'll notice that Compliance has been recently rebranded to Microsoft Purview. So this is everything that you need for your compliance journey. And scrolling down, we have a new feature in here. This is called Microsoft Risk Privacy or Priva. So Priva is your one-stop shop for privacy management. It's a way that you can manage all your privacy and specifically risk uh, in terms of privacy. So again, it shows me here how many items, how many personal items that, for example, you might have within your organization. So how many personal data items, how many content owners that you have uh, within your organization and so on. Now you can also have a number of what we call data profiles. And this shows you uh, how much personal data that you currently have in your tenant. So for example, if you're going for things like GDPR, the European Data Directive, ISO 27001, then of course privacy is really, really important. And you can see here, it's showing me that I've got Teams, SharePoint, Exchange, OneDrive, and so on. It also shows me how many content, the different types of content that I have here. And again, I can scroll down and you can see I've got things like 578, um, you know, in terms of full names of our users, physical addresses, things like credit card numbers, an awful lot of potential personal information here. And again, I can drill into that. And that brings me into something called Content Explorer. Now, Content Explorer can also be viewed through the Compliance Center as well. And you can see it shows me how many physical addresses, how many 
uh, how much personal, how much private information. And again, here you can see how many files that that's attracting attention to. And more importantly, with the privacy management, you can also export this content out. So super powerful features, okay? Super powerful. So also within the data profile, you can actually go in and you can create your own profiles as well. So again, you can set up your own queries. You can see where your content, where your data is actually stored around the world. And of course, that's really important in terms of things like jurisdiction. Now, the other thing that we've also got here is we've got something called privacy management policies that you can configure. So you can see that we have a number of kind of default policies here that have been set up. So, for example, default data minim minimization. And this is a way that we obviously you want to minimize the exposure of users data uh, within your tenant so you can go in here uh, and again it shows you uh, whether the policy status is on you can view the details of the status um, any actions that the user's taken um, if there's any kind of matched items that are important that you've set alerts to again in this tenant you well you saw there there's a couple of spreadsheets for example um, and you can also export that content out as well. So other things that are really useful are things like um, data transfers. So um, are there any users transferring data outside the organization? Um, are there any recommendations in terms of data overexposure? And as I say, there are a number of default policies that are created, but it's easy for you to go in and have a look at these. Now, if I go ahead and click on uh, one of these uh, particular policies, you can see, again, it gives me a report. Again, this is just a demo, so there's not really a lot uh, happening here. Um, if there were any matched items, however, I would be able to see these items and I could then export them out. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is privacy management policies. So really nice you know, if you're a privacy officer, if compliance is super important to you, then this is really good. Now, the one thing, unfortunately, that I can't show you is something called privacy or subject rights requests. Now, you need to essentially switch this on because uh, you need to be a member of the privacy management uh, users um, role or the admin role, I should say. And that's really important. The other thing that you also need here, you also need to pr purchase uh, privacy management requests. And these can either be purchased individually or in packs of 10 or 100. So if you're a privacy officer, compliance person, then this is really, really a uh, useful tool. So if you're a regular viewer on my channel, then you'll know that I recently did a session on this. This is Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps, or as it used to be known as Cloud App Security. And in here, you can discover shadow IT within your organization. You can look if there are any potential threats, how many apps there are, what are the apps, and more importantly, what kind of risk those apps present within the organization. Um, this tool also ties in with things like Defender for Identity. Um, it allows you to investigate not just users, but also the behavior of users and the behavior of apps. Uh, and it's looking for anomalies. You can control them through things like templates and policies, and it generates alerts. And I gotta tell you, it's an absolutely awesome platform. Well, this feature has now been enhanced even further. And if I go into the Microsoft 365 Security Center here, or as it's now known as Microsoft 365 Defender, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll down. And as I scroll down, we have a new feature and it's in Cloud Apps. 
and it's called App Governance. Now, App Governance, uh, again, it's a standalone tool, but it's an extension of Cloud App Security. So if you've got uh, Defender for Cloud Apps, it will integrate into that. And one of the first things that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to come into policies here. Now, out of the box, of course, uh, Microsoft suggests that there are a couple of kind of, I suppose, demo, uh, almost demo policies. And one is regulating app use and the other one is looking at secure app permissions. And you can see here that I've got a few of these uh, kind of already configured. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select one of these. And in fact, if I click onto this, you can see what it's looking for is it's looking for potential apps um, that are generating um, um, data or unusual data from a priority account. Now, as you can see, it generates a number of kind of default apps. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to create one. And you can see that as you create, um, it's saying, okay, do you want to base the, um, the rule or the policy based on usage? So for example, an unusual increase in the number of users using a particular app, or a new app that's using an unusually high amount of data usage within the next 90 days. Now, I'd like to mention, by the way, you can go into the settings and you can customize these settings if you want to. Um, you can also look at apps, for example, an app that's got too many privileges or a new app with a non-graph API. Graph, of course, is the application programming interface that 365 uses. And there are some other options there as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a policy which looks for apps with unusual high amounts of data usage within the last seven days. So any app that a user's created within the last seven days it's going to basically say, hey, you know, you can set it as medium or high priority and it will say, hang on, you know, that's unusual. So if I click on next, so what do I want to do? Do I, do I want to customize the policy or do you want to apply the default settings? Um, I'll just show you the customization option. So is it for all apps or just specific apps that you want to do this for? Um, or you can also do all apps except. I'm actually going to do it for all apps here. And then I'm going to say, do you want to add in any particular conditions? Now, the nice thing is you can see it's just picked up the conditions which were part of the policy. But you can, of course, go in and add additional ones here if you want to. For the purpose of this demo, I'm quite happy. I'm just going to go ahead and click on next. Now, what do I want to do? Do you want to actually disable the app? So basically it says prevent the app from accessing resources by deactivating it on Azure Active Directory. So for example, a corporate app or an app that you've deployed or an app that a user's downloaded, if it's generating an unusual amount of data, it will be um, deactivated. Now we can run it in audit mode. So a try before you buy, if you like, you can run it just over a week or a couple of weeks just to try it out, or you can activate it or make it inactive. For the purpose of here, I'm just going to go ahead and click it on audit mode. And you can see I have now gone ahead and I've created that policy. Now, if you're doing your Microsoft certification, so your SC exams, um, or your, for example, MS 500 exams, then you need to prepare for this. This is going to be included in those exams very soon. So there you have it. Very cool feature, app governance. So for my last segment, I want to come in here, Microsoft 365 Admin Center, and I'm scrolling down into Endpoint Manager. Now, Endpoint Manager is a tool that's getting a lot of updates at the moment. Now, specifically, if I go into Devices, um, first up, Microsoft 365 Devices, of course, 
can now be managed uh, through Intune. But more than that, if I scroll down, we now have a new feature uh, called Group Policy Analytics. Now, um, I'm often asked, Andy, we're in hybrid. So we're in a hybrid environment. Um, and that's absolutely fine. So in that case, that means that you've got clients, Windows 10, Windows 11 devices, which are essentially managed by Active Directory on premises. So it means that you're using Azure AD Connect. And so our Active Directory has authority. And I'm often asked, um, Andy, why do we need to keep our clients on Windows? Well, one of the main reasons is group policy and group policy, of course, are all your device and end user settings, your registry settings, which are stored in the sysvol folder in Active Directory. Well, in actual fact, it, the reason that you need that is actually getting less and less because um, Microsoft Endpoint Manager, a.k.a. Intune, now stores thousands and thousands of these settings. So the need to have a hybrid client is actually getting less and less. And in fact, the only real benefit of having an habit hybrid Azure AD join device is that you can manage it through conditional access. But the key thing to remember is it's still authenticated and authorized in Active Directory. So you might want to consider making it a full Azure AD join device because there's not really any reason, in my opinion, to keep it connected to Active Directory anymore. And what we now have is group policy analytics. So you can export those settings um, that you might have on premises and the chances are most of the settings are going to be here. And this is a great tool that will analyze those settings for you. Now, the other thing that we've also got here is if I come up into apps, um, again, we have a, a whole bunch of settings uh, to manage your apps. Uh, we have also here in Endpoint Manager a whole bunch of new reports. So you've got the group policy analytics report. Uh, you've also got the device configuration and um, Windows updates shows you how many updates that you've currently got on your system. Um, also, how many cloud attached devices do you have? And this, of course, is not just the Windows 365 uh, devices. This can also be uh, Azure Virtual Desktop or AVD devices as well. Um, the other thing I just wanted to draw your attention to, by the way, is if I go into tenant administration, one thing that's really useful, it's amazing how many people don't know this, we also have the Microsoft Tunnel Gateway. And the Tunnel Gateway allows you to do a split, what we call split VPN. So with traditional VPN, of course, it involves your users you know, I'm in a Starbucks, I connect to VPN, I connect to your organization. But the problem with that is they then start browsing regular internet traffic on your network. In other words, it uses your bandwidth up. And this is a really nice feature where you can essentially split the network and Microsoft will take will take that burden, will ease that burden on your environment. Okay, so that's a really nice feature. So you definitely want to go ahead and check out just some of those features um, in Endpoint Manager. And there's absolutely loads of them. I'm going to do a dedicated session on this in the not too distant future. So stick around for that. Hey, there you go. What can I say? Just some of the new and cool features coming out in Microsoft 365 and Azure. Hey, listen, if you've enjoyed the session, go ahead, bump that like button. It really helps my channel. And as always, if you've not subscribed, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and you won't miss out on future tutorials. And as you know, I love your comments, your questions, uh, and your feedback. So please uh, get those down below. So there you have it. Uh, that's it for this week. I really hope you've enjoyed the session and I will see you next time around. So you stay safe and I'll see you soon. Take care.
Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.